All right, welcome to another a couple of cold ones with uh, Corey and Leon again. Well, it's funny to me because this is called a couple of cold ones with Corey and Carlisle, and then in little fine print. Oh, and bonus Leon, because I couldn't even find it <laughs> the last one at first. I will um, put it up there where no, they no, always, no, no. Huh? I just like, at first I was like, oh, I was looking for my name. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, like when you said bonus Leon, I thought, oh, you must put a snippet of it on here. Oh, I, I mean, I just put, when I said bonus, I put like, because I already done two of them that day. Uh-huh. And the, the, these two were like the third and fourth. So I was letting people know that they had an extra one that I went, I went out the way for them. Oh. I'm here for you. Oh, is that how it works? Okay. Yeah. Now right look on. at you get all mad. Like, oh, my, nobody knew I was there, but my <laughs> name in fine print. <laughs> look at no, you. no, actually I got a lot of compliments on it. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. Tell you what, the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to make a big marquee with Leon. Thank you. <laughs> and Corey. <laughs> uh, put a big afro on the marquee, sir. <laughs> you know, it's your trademark. You know, your trademark. So let's go ahead and get into the top five here. What, what we what, got what, this week. The movies that came out this week? The, uh, the movies that came out this week. And All I right. think that you already know that it's some bullshit. Well, it ain't no bullshit. It's just our opinions. Well, I mean, we the, knew what it was going to be like. Well, but like, I'll, I'll start. Okay. I don't, I don't want to ruin anything yet. Well, all I'm going to say is like we're in a season of bullshit right now where the top five can only be bullshit movies. Well, I, you know, maybe I'm going too far here because at number five, we do have the bank job. Okay. Which that's I, good. Yeah, no, that's uh, I, I I believe that that's a British import. Right. I don't right. think that we that's that's even an American film. Wow, that's amazing that that hit the top five. Unless it's by an American director and it just happens to take place in London. Hey. I'm not sure. Well, somebody tell me. I haven't done my research on that too much. I just know it's number five. We saw it and I really liked that movie a lot. It, it was a it was a good caper film. No, that's awesome. Yeah, with with my boy Jason uh Jason Statham. What, to, why all y'all so gay with Jason Statham? I, because he's he's good, and we, I'm just happy to see him do something besides hanging out with Jet Li and making you know some <laughs> stupid ass action flick. I mean, he's always. The, I mean, he wants to. He's the white Wesley Snipes. Uh, yo, I was just gonna say that. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to say. Because he wants to be the British Sylvester Stallone, but he's the white Wesley Snipes. Yeah, you know, Wesley Snipes is a great actor. Had everything going for him, and. This nigga want to go out and like explode shit and beat up people. And it's like just act, man. You know, quit well, fucking around. Well, quit well, on that act. front, Wesley Snipes started out as a good actor who just became a you know a direct to video action drone. Whereas yeah. Jason Statham started out as a male model. So any good acting he does is a is a plus. Was Jason Statham a, a male model? Yeah, he he was another Zoolander. Jesus, what, what what did that son of a bitch not do? I know he they say he he was a, a professional swimmer and yeah and. and, and Karate guy. And yeah, karate champion. I think he might have been like a world-class chef or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he, he was a spy. Yeah, he's got the he's got the the high score in Donkey Kong. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's a uh, no good great great actor, man. I think I think he has great potential. I haven't seen him do anything that's off the charts yet, but he just has the potential, I think. And that's why I'm glad to see him do something like this. So okay, moving on to number four, we we have uh, now we're moving on to the bullshit. Okay, good. Uh, we got uh, Semi Pro. Okay. Which a lot of people I mean, say this movie bomb, but it's still in the top five. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's the one, one of these where it's like uh, it tanked. It was number one, but they say, like, well, it only made $15 million. You give me $15 million, you ain't going to hit a word. Exactly. <laughs> You're talking about some broke brothers up here. I mean, if a movie make $5, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, that's five dollars more than I got in my pocket right now. You know, damn, that's a jumbo jack and some fries and a and a soda. Well, I tell you, it wasn't enough of a bomb for Will Ferrell to stop making these goddamn movies over and over again. I know, yeah, I, and, and it ain't gonna stop. You know, he's talking about. It. I'm thinking about getting more serious now. Nah, fuck, <laughs> you no, know you're not. The next one, the only difference is he's not gonna make a rated R. Oop, the cord is god damn it, man. The cord is messing up right here. I'm talking about using some ghetto ass equipment, boy. My cord is getting frailed now, so it sounds like we're kind of going in and out. Well, a cord is like two bucks, isn't it? What did I just say about the five dollars? <laughs> I'm not. I spent my two dollars on a jumbo jack today. <laughs> I couldn't even get some fries, you know. So yeah, I might have to. At some point, maybe I'll have to stop things and get another cord out that I have over here. But for right now, I think we're all right. Yeah, no, Will Ferrell, man. The only difference is the next one is going to be PG-13 instead of rated R because that's what right. everybody says that that's the reason why this one kind of stumbled. Oh, is that is that the reason? That's one of the reasons they they say, and I and I have a tendency to agree with them because you, we all see these movies. The classic example now is Meet the Spartans. 
if it had been PG-13, it would have made more money because more people would have been able to go see it. Well, that's true because these movies are written to eighth graders. So you don't <laughs> want to, like, block your core audience. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, and, I, and when I saw it was Red Oh, R, no, no, was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I said eighth graders. I meant eight-year-olds. Oh, <laughs> at the, what's the difference at some point? You know what I mean? They're all retarded as hell. Shit. Uh, what do we have here now? We got What's oh, number three? Number three is Vantage Point, a movie that you liked, but I, did. I, I, I didn't too much. I, I decided that I didn't like it. I just thought it was funny for all the wrong reasons. Fair enough. It, it, to me, it's a movie that like I liked because pro, you know probably the reason I liked it was because you told me it was so bad. And I was like, it's not that bad. I found it entertaining, but it ain't one I feel the need to defend tooth and nail. Somebody says like, I thought that movie was dumb. I'm kind of like, well, okay. I, I know. People think we in the ghetto or some shit now because they hear the police <laughs> sirens going off. Back <laughs> we're expecting to hear gunshots going off next. <laughs> well, well they, I'm sure they do think that, like, when the police sirens go by, our voices get kind of low. I know. And you hear, you can hear us clicking out the lights. Shh, my neighbor, she found a call the cops. <laughs> we pretend we like near. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> see, our, see our shadows in here moving. <laughs> Open up. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Hey, all right, man, I do have to stop for a second here. And I don't know how I'm going to do this because I have uh, the laptop on my lap right now, but i got to get that ice pack out. The, the, uh, the computer's crying. All right, I'll get the ice pack. Thank you. And Leon is getting the ice pack. I know. It's funny, uh, Leon just came back. We didn't have the ice pack, the gel pack in the freezer, so I told him to grab a TV dinner out of there. <laughs> Apparently, we ate them all, so. Yeah, it's nothing but a bottle of Jägermeister. And now it is what is on top of the computer right now. <laughs> a big bottle of Jäger. <laughs> well, I'll get the duct tape in case it slides off again. Yeah, when you see me up here, like, starting to, like, shake and my eyes look droopy, that means I'm drinking even when you're not looking. <laughs> so, uh, let's see what we got next here. We have. Number two. Yeah, number two is. Fool's Gold. No, a Good. movie that w we've been so busy that this movie came under the radar, and I knew it was going to be number two. College Road Trip? That's right. Yeah. And I tried to get Edie to go see it today. Edie talking about, I'm an extra in that movie. I'm like, you, you, ain't nobody going to see you in that movie. Go. Oh, you know, if I had been thinking, I totally would have gone to see it. Well, I, I'm going to go see it tomorrow. But I, I don't know what to tell you about this movie. It's, I mean, I, I know when I saw the previews at first, I was like, damn, Roscoe Jenkins is still getting advertising. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, I, I can see this movie having legs just because it's got the whole Disney Channel behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a lot of kids, especially girls who want to go see Raven, and they don't know how shitty Martin Lawrence is. So they're like, oh, <laughs> hey, this guy looks like he's funny. We'll go see this movie. I like Martin Lawrence too. I'm I'm happy he's having success. I mean, as a as just as a guy. I mean, I'm, I, look, I'm a nice going guy. I like for anybody to have success. I mean, Come Martin on, Lawrence. Man. I mean, I, look, I feel, I'm proud of the brother. Go ahead, make your money. Whatever you got to do. But Big Mama's uh, house and Big Mama's house too. Okay, fuck him, man. You know? <laughs> exactly. He's getting paid for something I could do. I mean, didn't he make a one an RV movie at some point? One of those. Uh, well, I think every comedian out there has made an RV movie. I think I, Ice Cube has made one. I know Robin Williams has made one. Yeah, Cedric, Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric the Entertainer has made one. Chevy Chase. I mean, every, if you're a comedian, you're just going to end up making a road trip movie in an RV or something. <laughs> you know? Black, white, in between. You, you end up on the road somewhere. But you know what the thing is? I actually, like, with, with College Road Trip, I was like, you know what? This might be cool. Just to, to have them a, a chance for Martin Lawrence to do something a little bit different and and Raven, she's she's got a lot of charisma, but uh, when we saw Horton Here's a Who and they showed trailers for it, I was like, man, this looks awful. What road, college road trip? Yes. <clears throat> did they show a trailer for that? Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous, man. I mean, it's and it's rated. Why are they showing a trailer for that? It's already out. Shh, don't ask me. Well, it's uh, it's it's rated G for one thing because that same theater was showing it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it, it's rated. It's a rated G movie. So Martin Lawrence is officially crossed over into that that region where he, you start out either as nasty or a gangster rapper or something, and you finally realize, well, fuck my image, man. I need to make some money. It, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and that. So that's that's what Eddie Murphy has done. <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, everybody has done this. Yeah, Eddie Murphy's a pioneer of that. Just like when when everybody counted Eddie Murphy out, he started making rated G movies, and then suddenly he sprang back again. Yeah, even uh, uh, Rodney Dangerfield made one. We got some nasty comedians who have done this. The Rodney Dangerfield made a, a movie called Rover Dangerfield. Oh, right. Richard Pryor even had a kid show nobody ever remembers. They, they don't remember. Pryor's Place? Pryor's Place. 
I remember Pry's place. Really, I do too. But a lot of people they say he did. I'm like, oh man, get out of here! Richard Pry ain't had no kids show. Like yeah. Pry's, but look it up. Yep. I ain't lying. He sure did. Shit, he, he was broke. Yeah, he got to go back to treatment. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember that uh, that Andrew Dice Clay Saturday morning cartoon. There was an Andrew Dice Clay. You, you kidding? Yeah, Hickory Dickory Dock. The mouse ran up my well. Whatever the hell else you want to put in there. <laughs> no, I am. Yeah, kidding. I was about to say. <laughs> and, yeah, it's a kid's show. <laughs> what rhymes with this? <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay's nursery rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Clock? No, cock, you <laughs> fucking idiot. It's a puppet. Yeah, it only lasted two shows, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> and for number one, we got 10,000 B.C., and you knew. I mean, oh, you, yeah, there you no knew. doubt about that. So, a, a big special effects movie, and, which I still think. I don't know what Cyrus was so hard on this movie about with the effects. I, I, I would tell people to go see the movie just for the effects because I thought that I, I, I was amazed by them. You know what? To me, it was like the, the, the tiger was bad. There, there's there's no arguing that. Um, the uh, the mammoths were really good, I thought. Now I'm split on the 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 prehistoric turkeys, in as much as they look good, but it was such a dumb concept. It's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what the hell is this doing in here? Y'all got killer chickens in this goddamn movie. Now who who thought who really who who sat down and thought of this and said let's do this seriously? I mean, it, I mean, it, it, you know, man, it just what makes me mad. It's like. The way they're they're mixing, they they just they, they they're telling science in such a bad way that you know most people who come in this to see it are the kind of dumbasses who walk away thinking that's how it really was, and that's the last thing they need is somebody mixing things. Well, somebody on the site made made a good point, and I have to agree with them because even when we were reviewing it, I was thinking, well, they're not really trying to be historically accurate. Sure, they make it's a fantasy film. Sure, I understand that, and at the same time. Once you title it 10,000 BC, it seems historical. Yeah, it, it's coming. It has that overtone to it. Shit, that comic strip BC is more. <laughs> BC is more. Accurate. It's more real than this shit. <laughs> yeah, caveman went around talking and shit, <laughs> and having everyday jobs like just like what you said, the Flintstones. The Flintstones, yeah, yeah. No, man, that it's just some of that stuff was cool, and you're right. It was. It just got ridiculous when they got. To the liberties that they took, even if it is a fantasy. Yeah. You got some fucking giant turkeys eating people, some man eating turkeys. I mean, why don't y'all just put that fucking squirrel from Ice Age in there, have him go around eating people? You, you know, know what? That, that would have made it. Cause at that point, you'd have said like, oh, it's one of these kind of movies. And you'd have accepted everything that was in it. Now, you still would have fallen asleep in the middle of it cause this shit is boring. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you could accept it. That's the biggest flaw of that movie, man. It's the, oh shit. Oh, sorry. Ah, damn it. Thank you. My triumphant music. I need. I need to. I just need to stop doing this. I need to set my page. What are you this. doing? I, well, I go to my page because there's some email that I want to read. Oh, okay. And of course, I got it set, set to play the music right on my page. I'm just gonna have to remember to cut that shit off. Because when you do it, you think like, oh, I'm so cool. People want to hear the music that I got playing when they come <laughs> right. on my page. <laughs> right. <laughs> my music sucks anyway. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the first song on your page? It's this girl named Angeli, and the song is called Rainy Day. Huh. And. If anybody's been on my page knows I have a very eclectic taste in music, so that's... Uh, I have to check it out. Yeah, no, it is. That's the kind of music that would be right up your alley. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, you know, we those, we those nerdy black dudes. We, <laughs> we, we listen to things like gold frap and shit like that. <laughs> we go down the street, you know, everybody else is basing, uh, you know, fucking... Whoever's out there, uh, MC Bootyhead or whatever. <laughs> And we we going down the street, but, but the car's rattling. Yeah, exactly. Five blocks down the street, <laughs> Negroes be going down the street. Oh, that ain't even music no more because they can't hear that shit. Yeah, the car just be vibrating, man. You know they can't hear that shit. All you hear is, and it's like, it's like man, who really who can hear that shit? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> unless that's the act, music changes so much, unless that's the new chopped and screwed music. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nigga on a mic. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting around smoking a joint. Like, yeah, you feel that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm deaf now. I can't feel nothing. You see that change he put in there? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> but we going down the street playing, you know, Huey Lewis. Still. <laughs> well, not Huey Lewis. Dude. Okay, all right. Give us some credit here. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Weird Eye Yankovic. <laughs> oh, just, just, I, I just laugh at the arrogance of thinking like, Everybody in the neighborhood really wants to listen to your dorky ass music. Just some thumping bass. It's like, oh wow, that dude's cool because he listens to vibrations. I mean, what, what the fuck, man? I don't want to hear that. And half these cars are about to fall apart anyway. Have you seen, <laughs> you know, a dude running down the street, car vibrating. You see the rims falling off. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the time they get down the street, the doors off. Now that would be a scene. <laughs> there's, there's a scene for a movie right there. <laughs> yeah, somebody just put in put in some amps in their car and they cut the radio on and shit just blow up. The, the, the hamburger pimp driving down the street with his music blasting and, and rivets falling off the car. <laughs> No, nah, man. So anyway, uh, I, what, I was going to my page because uh had some it actually had some uh, interesting emails coming through this week. Pull that, Wait, that, are you looking around the couch for him? What's going on? Uh, man, if it ain't one thing, it's another. It's, it's the, it's the, I just need a better setup. I should have had it set up uh, like I did last week because uh, I forgot to put the Jaeger on my lap <laughs> around with the other uh, the other cold pack. And so this computer's whining again. People, this computer gets hot. I mean, you, for those of you who have a Macintosh computer out there, you sell know. Sell it. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't, no, don't sell it. Just keep that shit about 15 feet off your lap because they've had cases where people have actually tried to sue uh, Apple, I think, because they, they burned themselves on their laps. Now, I don't know how you can sit up there and let, like, let your lap keep getting hotter and hotter. It's like with that old old experiment where they say you put a frog in some boiling water. <laughs> right. well, you put him in cold water and gradually let it boil, and a frog will stay in there and boil to death because he just don't know. Yeah. I guess that's what people do with their laps. <laughs> it's like 10 hours later, they're like, shit, why? there's a hole in my jeans. Well, either that or they figure like, hey, I work with McDonald's coffee. I'm going to get paid. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's right. It's going there and just, uh, just take hot coffee and just throw it on your face. <laughs> ah, I'm a billionaire. <laughs> But these Macintosh, they, uh, these Macintosh laptops, uh, I have a Macintosh Pro in uh, one of those new Intel computers, man. And those things, they burn up. Boy, I'm telling you. It's funny how you never see Justin Long talk about that in those commercials. No, hell no. They don't. I mean, what is he going to say? You yeah. know, that's what, that's what the other Macintosh guys should do. That little fat <laughs> guy, they, they should have him with some gasoline and just... <laughs> Have them set Justin Long on fire. You know those people. You know those those Mac commercials where they like they got the the fat dorky guy. I'm yeah. a Mac. Yeah, and Justin Long is all cool. I'm the cool Mac guy. Yeah, they should just have that fat nerd just douse his ass with gasoline and set his ass on fire. <laughs> ah! Yeah, you didn't know the Macs do that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> ding 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 ding. You know, the commercial they should do is just him like you know making out with Drew Barrymore. Like, hey, I'm a Mac. This is what I do. Yeah, I getting shit. I'm getting laid. What are you doing over there, PC? <laughs> I have spreadsheets to do. I don't have time to get laid. <laughs> they should have a PC be a pirate, cause that's the best way you can pirate shit. That's they true. They have Justin Long, like, shit, like I'm making out with Drew Barrymore. All right, matey, well I'm getting booty for free. <laughs> Because <laughs> on a PC, you can get on there and steal anything. I ain't saying you should do it, but... No, no, I, I'm not advocating it, but it's out there. If Music, anything, yeah. movies, TV shows, <laughs> programs, <laughs> you know... Porn, anything. Porn, oh my God, yeah, porn. <clears throat> If anything, I'm, in, I'm, I'm giving a compliment to the Mac. You can't steal as many programs on the Macintosh computer. They got that shit kind of sealed tight. Yeah. You know, good yeah. for them. Yes. Uh, yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> it's like Macintosh computers have a big chastity belt <laughs> on that shit. Mm -mm. I know. Molotov cocktease. Okay, so now. I'm going to save some of this email near the end. Okay. Uh, I, but I want to tell you, people, the reason why we don't have some of the latest reviews up, like the bank job and Miss uh, Miss Wesley Willis, Willingham, whatever. Uh, Pettigrew? Miss Pettigrew lives for a day mm -hmm. in a uh, college road trip. We've seen all of those except for college road trip because they didn't have a screening for that because they knew it was some bullshit. And South by Southwest, the big festival here in town, just blew through. Yeah, it it just started, and if you don't live in Austin, you don't know how much South by Southwest takes over our city. It it is insane, and they send us off to do interviews and see movies and whatnot. So this whole weekend, I have barely slept. I haven't been in the house. I swear to God to you, man, I was on my bed this morning. Uh, I was I had a crime with a bottle of Jack in one hand and a pistol in the other. <laughs> <laughs> Why not again? I do this every year. I'm looking at the I'm looking like uh, 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 Martin Sheen at the beginning of a, uh, Apocalypse Now, <laughs> when South by Southwest is rolling in, into town. I'm in my underwear in my room, crying in the corner. <laughs> no, I don't want to do this. A lot of people like that shit, man. But I and I, and I think it's really cool. It's a cool festival. No, no. I mean, you know what? Overall, I'm glad they have it. It brings a lot of money into the city. It is cool. You know, you got the their interactive phase of it, the film phase and then the music phase but you know when you're a resident here i mean and you don't own a business where you're making money off of it it's kind of a pain in the ass too. it's it's very much a pain in the ass and 
I love the festival. I love what they're doing. I think it's a great thing. They show some cool stuff, and they man, we got to do some cool interviews this time around. Uh, the, that the lead guy who was in across the universe, who's in Twenty One, uh-huh. did a uh, did an interview with him and the real guy that is that he's based on. Who's, oh, is that right? Who's an Asian dude? <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, I'm gonna put the audio up for it because he was actually a funny interview. That dude, uh, and because he was, he was, he was just straight up with me. He, I said, man, I said, I, and I know I'm always making racial jokes. People, you know, we're not well, racial. That's kind of messed up that but, they, when they make the movie, they're like, yeah, Asian guy's not gonna cut it. We need a white guy to play this role. But I asked him about that. I said, man, they, they had an Asian dude right there on the set. Yeah, <laughs> they couldn't use him, and he's like, nah. Look, I said, if anybody makes a movie about me, I want the dude, the, the guy they have who's gonna make the most money, and that's I want Brad Pitt or somebody in there. Like, but they, well, yeah, but they didn't get Brad yeah, Pitt. I was like, they didn't get Brad Pitt, but they got another white dude. I guess they, I guess they figured that would sell more than an Asian yeah, guy. They got, they got some white guy that I'd never seen before. Yeah, I, I, look, I was thinking the same thing. I was because I joked around with him. I thought I said, "Oh yeah, that's funny." I, I wouldn't want Denzel Washington to play me. I want Brad Pitt too. But I was in deep in my mind, I was like, "Man, you know, they got. They, I know they got like two Asian dudes out there that they can choose from, but those guys need work too. You know, and this and this yeah. one." And, and this one dude they got, I, I know, I know a white lead actor is going to always sell more tickets most of the time, but that's because they don't let anybody else get in there to take a chance on that. Yeah, they could have got that guy, I, I forget his name, the one who plays Harold and Harold and Kumar. Yeah, that's what I mean, I'm talking he, about. He's like the leading, you know, young Asian actor right now. John Cho, I think. Yeah, yeah, name. John yeah. Cho, that's yeah, it. who I talked to also. Oh, cool. Uh, him and Cal Penn and Neil Patrick Harris. Dang. Yeah, they were all three there together. See, I, I wouldn't have wanted to do that because it would have been too much like watching that movie again. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> and that was a bad experience, dude. They were cool guys, but that movie is. And and I talked to the director and the writer. I, you feel so bad because all these people are so nice and they're coming in promoting the movie. But Harold and Kumar was pretty bad. Hey, man. You know, a lot of work goes into a bad movie. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's. I, I mean, I I did say I admired the way that they tried to bring up certain social issues, but it was, <laughs> wow, it brought, man. <laughs> How did you how did you twist your tongue and even to come up with any kind of compliment? Come on, what do you do? I, 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 I don't bring up social issues. Yeah, they brought them up in the most cartoonish, crowbarred in way possible. Well, they brought up some social issues. Sure enough, it was followed by a shit joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. Kinda... Oh yeah, yeah. They brought up social issues. Guantanamo Bay is not a good place to be. Hey, thanks for that, guys. Because I thought it was a country club up until now. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. I really did think it was a country club. Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> I thought it was like an attraction at uh, Disney World. <laughs> Guantanamo Bay. Welcome. I'll, I will have the cock sandwich. <laughs> but they, but they, they, yeah, the, all these people do these interviews here, and they're nice people, And I, but there's so many of them, and you hardly have time to, to sit down and rest because you have to go to bed, and then you wake up the next morning, and you're probably drunk and hung over from the night before because of some party you went to. And Can I stop you for a second? Yeah, sure. What you're basically saying to our, our, our fans is, Feel sorry for me because I spent a whole day interviewing celebrities and getting drunk and partying. My life is really hard. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm not saying that at all. You, uh, feel free to do that if you'd like. <laughs> I'm not going to turn that into sympathy if it's there. But hey, excuse me while I break out a violin. Go continue, please. No, I ain't going to do that to me. <laughs> Fuck you. No, well, all I'm saying is I am apologizing really for not being on the ball with getting these reviews up. I'm going to do those tonight, as a matter of fact, if I have to stay up all night, because I got some rest, mainly because I passed out on my bed that, this Yeah, morning. that's happened to me, too. Man, I was trying. We got this new camera, because we just need some something smaller to go out and do these interviews. I mean, yeah. I'm looking like a homeless person when I go out <laughs> with all these bags. Because when we go out, sometimes they, they're cool enough to provide. Okay, so they have these press junkets, people. That That's what most of these uh, interviews are. They have a camera already set up to go in. Oh, and they got food set up. Man, that Harold and Kumar uh, press junket that they had. You yeah, they had White Castle burgers everywhere. Oh, man, I would have gone in there and uh, I would have knocked that goddamn table over their head. You got to be out your fucking mind having me up here eating some fucking White Castle burgers. Well, what'd they have then? They had, they had like gourmet fajitas. Really? Shrimp, chicken, vegetable, beef. They had uh, all the accoutrements to go with it. They had this great dessert tray set up with 
cheesecake, all these different flavors of cheesecake and cookies and Dang. so man, yeah, you go in there and they just and they got all these sodas and bottled water and, and they 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 just did it right, man. So they're gonna make sure you're gonna go in and say, Man, Hell the Kuba was a good ass movie. I mean you're gonna sit up there eating cheesecake, mm, mm, this shit was good. Right, right, right. But yeah, right, yeah, yeah. With a whole setup like that and the guy sitting there being nice. Everybody wants you to go in like, hey, man, you guys are the real deal. You, you'll you stick it to them and go in there like, what was that bullshit you made me sit through? <laughs> but you can't do that. You're no, like, you, man, man, you man, can't. These people are accommodating. I'm not going to be rude. Th- and that's the thing. You really don't. I mean, we got to be honest with how we with how we feel. Yeah. But I would go out of my way to be nice to these people because they are, they're they really cool people. I'm not one of those snotty people who wants to go in and, 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 and be the guy who's going to go against the grain. So you wrote Harold and Kuma, huh? No, yeah. no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, they're human beings. You want to show common courtesy and you'll be totally nice to them just like they're nice to you. Now, we get on the site. And completely <laughs> stab him in the back. <laughs> I know, man. Because I really felt bad about that Will Ferrell thing. I'll get to, I'll get to something that they said about that in a little bit. Okay. But uh, my point is, like, I stayed up all night trying to work this camera that we just got. And I'm, and I'm in the middle of all these wires. I'm looking at stuff. And everything is tangled because I don't know what I'm doing. Because I'm, I'm really – I've never been this tired before ever, really. I was, I, on the, I was on the verge of being sick. Yeah. And I just put my head down because I was exasperated about something. I couldn't figure out something. I woke up, like, four hours later – in the middle of all these wires and shit. It, I mean, I was like, I was like, like in a net, <laughs> like, you know, they caught an animal in a net. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is all this shit right there? And so I got a little bit of rest. And now that that's happened, um, and, and all the, the, and the brunt of all the interviews are over. Yeah. We can get some, we can start updating the site. And I really apologize. People I hate these festivals when they come through because I meet a lot of cool people, but we always end up at some party. Yeah. And all these parties are the same. I'm just not, I I have to admit, I'm just not a party person anymore. Wow. I I never thought I'd hear you say that. Well, last night we went to our friend, our friend opened a bar, our friend Miguel. Congratulations, by the way, Miguel, who is not even listening. But, (laughs) right. But, but, but Cyrus is helping running things over there. Cyrus is actually helping at the bar. And I have more fun at that bar than any kind of Southwest, South by Southwest party. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it really was just. Because it's people. chill and, and it's, it's people there. Yeah. No, at this South by Southwest party, people are just really looking to see who's famous, seeing who they can network with. I mean, it really is uh, Hollywood, kind of right. L.A. right now. It is, it is bullshit, man. And, see, I think, yeah. I think like the last big South by Southwest party I went to, well, it wasn't, no, I take that back. It wasn't the last big one, but just when I remember where like the big guy there was Pauly Shore. And I'm like, wait, I had to like weasel my way in here. Just to see Polly Shore. No offense, like, but who doing? the fuck wants to go see Polly Shore? Exactly. <laughs> I'd go up there and knock Polly Shore off out his head, man. You made me stand outside to wait for your ass? I'm, I'd go out there and make him stand in line. <laughs> get, get back out there. <laughs> you get out there and see how it feels, you son of a... But, man, let me tell you, first of all, what, how you doing, man? I've been running my mouth. You got anything you want to say? What's been cool with you? What's happening with you? Um, I, You know what? I, I've been feeling good. I got a lot of work out of the way. I'm having a, an, an easy week for the most part. Uh, you know, I'm working too much to really go to South by Southwest, even if I wanted to. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just having fun chilling with you guys. Uh, unfortunately, as much as I think Austin's the greatest city in the U.S., one thing that's not so cool about it is uh, the allergens in the air, cedar and mold. And so allergies are hitting me real hard if my voice sounds weird. I know, man. People walking around looking like a uh, sleeve stack or something. You know, <laughs> the face is all wet. People, yeah, people, it, it's just, it's that time of year where people, are, it's spring is coming in. I'm constantly sneezing. Yeah, no, I'm walking down the street snotting, hanging all out my nose and everything. I don't, I don't even try anymore. I just let it hang out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> now, exactly. It ain't going nowhere. It's going, <laughs> I'm going to wipe my nose and it's going to come back again. <laughs> so you can't deal with it. That's your problem. <laughs> right. right. I, don't look at me while you're eating. <laughs> we ain't got to look at me. <laughs> what you looking at? <laughs> no. So one of the, the, the weirdest interviews that I did this whole time, though, was with the director of of Gummo and Bully and the writer of Kids. If anybody's seen the, these movies, this this guy's probably most notorious for writing Kids. Uh, kids was that movie where yeah. they simulated actual teen, te- uh, teenagers actually having sex. Right, right. I never saw the movie myself. I hadn't. I, I've I, seen some of it. I've seen you, most of it, but really? not all of it. Yeah. So you haven't seen any of these other movies like Gummo and stuff like no, that? No, no. I, I hear people talk about Gummo all the time, but I have no idea what it is. Yeah, and I, I, I've never seen any of these movies, and I feel kind of bad about that. I mean, the guy, because... I'd be curious to see what they are, what they're, what they're like, because the guy is, is crazy. I'm gonna tell you, like right, right now, the guy's name, Harmony, somebody. Oh, I can't remember his last name. Look him up. You'll know who I'm talking about. But I, I interviewed him for his movie called Mr. Lonely. Yeah. 
and it had Diego Luna in it, the guy from Itumama Tambien. Yeah, 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 Diego Luna, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was him. He played he played a Russian Michael Jackson impersonator. Wait, maybe, this uh, is that movie you were telling me about yeah, last night? Yeah, or else he was maybe really a Mexican Michael Jackson impersonator. I thought they said, described him as Russian, but he gets taken by a Marilyn Monroe impersonator to an island full of other impersonators, which, and I told you this already, I was just right, telling you right, like kind of an island of Dr. Moreau, except, except with, with impersonators. celebrity impersonators. Yeah, and that island included Charlie Chaplin, uh, 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 Char it was Charlie Chaplin, the Three Stooges, Shirley Temple, Buckwheat, the Pope, the Queen of England, in Little Red Riding Hood, <laughs> when, when Little Red Riding Hood See, came from, I okay, don't know. Th this is where you lose me. Like all these others are like you know based on people, or actual people, or or characters they played. No, it's based on actual people actually. But uh, Little Red Riding Hood, I don't know, man. It's, it's, oh, Sammy Davis Jr. was in there too. <laughs> and the thing about this is that these people really don't look anything like those people. If Buckwheat, the only one that looked like Buckwheat is Buck is Buckwheat because it was a little black boy with big hair. Okay, but Sammy Davis Jr. didn't look like Sammy Davis Jr. The Pope. It could have been really any. Billy Crystal playing. Sammy it was Davis a, Jr. he was a white dude in blackface, <laughs> and it's the the Queen of England looks nothing like her. That Charlie Chaplin is was a French actor that I've seen before, who's a great acrobatic physical actor, but uh, he look he looks like shit. The guy from Delicatessen. No, no, not that dude. Okay. And that dude was uglier than this. <laughs> this dude, you mean that part in Reservoir Dogs where Quentin Tarantino said, "Dang." The f no, well, it wasn't Quentin Tarantino that said that. It was somebody who, who they were talking about one of the, one of the uh, mobster guys. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. Tim Roth was talking about the Tim main Roth. guy. Say he looks like the Thing, like Ben Grimm from the Fantastic Four. This French actor looks like the Thing, really. Looks like his <laughs> okay. face is made out of rocks, and he's, they got him playing Charlie Chaplin. You okay. might as well put like a little Hitler mustache on a bag of rocks. <laughs> but so, yeah, and, and when you get there, they don't. There's nothing really happening. You're just going through the lives of. What it was, what is, what it's like to be there on this island with these people every day. There's no real plot to it. They kill some sheep because they get diseased, and they plan on putting on a big show. That's the big plot of the story. A big show for who? For the villagers or the people, the, the rest of the normal people in town. Okay. So, <laughs> um, <right. coughs> oh, and there's something about nuns. <coughs> Jesus, excuse me. There's something about nuns jumping off of planes with BMX bikes and <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, just, why not? Oh, and, and Werner Herzog's in it also. Is, so, is he really in it? Or is it no, no, it's not an impersonator. It's really him. Okay. The, the, the guy who, who directed Grizzly Man is really in this movie. So I talked to this dude, man, and I think he truly was fucking with me. He said he was not. But during this whole interview, I asked him, I said, well, first of all, I said, where did you get the name Harmony from? And he said, well, my parents used to bomb buildings and set them on fire. And I said, what? What does that have to do with Harmony? He's like, well, I guess they were, they were part of some whole movement, but they were just really arsonist. So they, so they went to jail or something, and, and, and so when they came out, they named, they named me Harmony. I was like, all right, I don't know if that has to do with Harmony, but okay. Okay. And then he said, he, I'll, I'll put up the review. You guys just have to hear it. But basically, this is what he told me. He said he took an eight-year sabbatical from directing movies, and during that eight years, one of the highlights of uh, what he did was he became a fisherman, but the, the, this, this crew of fishermen ended up being a cult. And they were hired by a rich Japanese guy to go out and find this elusive fish that nobody could find. And he said he became disgruntled when they couldn't find the fish and the crew was getting crazier and some, some illegal stuff was going on. So he, he, he left. And then he it, went on it to make this like movie. It sounds like he was like doing a pitch for his next movie. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. I was like, you, uh, he just hated journalists so much yeah. that he just said, I'm going to sit up here and just fuck with this guy the whole time. He ain't real anyway. Look at him. He got a laptop computer. You know, kind of shit. <laughs> what am I doing here? And it was early in the morning, too. And, and I asked him, I said, man, you're fucking with me. And he's like, no, nah, it's, it's early, man. I wouldn't be making this up. And I think I heard him tell some of this, uh, this stuff when he was doing his uh, Q&A, but I walked out. Yeah. But he also mentioned that there, there was a Madonna. And, oh, yeah, Madonna was in there, too. And he said, yeah, the Madonna impersonator we got. And Abraham Lincoln was there, too, by the way. But the Madonna impersonator. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> and he said, the Madonna impersonator. He said, yeah, we, we got her because we read a story about her, how she got her, her arm caught in a horse's ass. And it had to be surgically removed when they had to go in and widen the horse's anus. And I said, really? Come on, man. Just... Get, 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 give it up. Quit fucking with me. I mean, if you if you really are like messing with me, that's that's fine. This is you, you, this is interesting. Yeah. But he's like, no, no, that's true. 
So I was like, oh, shit, okay, why are you making these fucked up movies? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I'll I'll put it up, man. You got is I want to put up the video because when you see him, it doesn't look like he's lying. It looks like he's really nervous. It looks like he's sitting up there telling, like, "Damn, I, even I know this is fucked up." So okay, and the, and the, since we were using a new camera, the audio is blown out. So I, I'll have to put a, a disclaimer up there. You can you can hear it well enough, but it really is one of those things where you need to hear this <laughs> from, okay. from this guy. Okay, if you say so. So anyway, that that's. That's the highlight. That, that right sounds there. nuts. That's, and that's South by Southwest in a nutshell right there. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We, you, do you want to re review Horton Hughes or who? Sure, why not? While we're here, do you mind? No, I don't mind. Before we do that, I want to go ahead and kind of end this particular segment okay. by reading some uh, email we have okay. here. Uh, uh -oh. And turn off your phone. And turn off my phone, sorry. Uh, Alex Hacker is uh, he wants to make it a regular out of what my mother does, uh, Alex? Don't know we okay. We know your mom wants when a Grammy and a, and a Peabody and, uh, and a Tony and a, uh, I, I don't know. It's, uh, when uh, the, the the Golden Ass Porn Award. <laughs> I mean, we ain't gonna take a guess every week what your mom does. All right. I mean, we. She, and by the way, she's on IMDb and they have a listed. I think somebody else did some research on it. And it's her name, I think. Oh, I don't think he's lying. I'm sure he's telling the truth. But it's just but he he did kind of tease it and string it along i'm like just just tell me i you know what i, I think alex is a good kid i, I like him a lot it, there's just only one thing i'd like to say to not just to him but to a lot of people who will send me an email and say leon what's up i'm like do you really want me to like <laughs> sit the keyboard and write down a whole long answer for just a what's up or is this just you, you saying hi well see you should do what i do i just i just send an email back saying what's up that's all right. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna go through my whole okay. day. You know, I don't, I don't know, what to, I don't know how to respond to that. What's I up? Say, I, I, I know, say uh, the sky. <laughs> Shit. No, you, <laughs> <laughs> you should tell me nuts or something. <laughs> now leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the shout outs and the and the hellos. Or just that, what's up? It's like uh, I don't know. You, you tell me. I just say yeah, uh, nothing. You and if they write back and do a whole conversation, I'll just leave that shit alone. And then they, and they don't get mad. Why did you stop talking to me? Did I do something wrong? <laughs> yeah, you asked me what the fuck is up. I mean, <laughs> come, at, come at me with something substantial, you know what I mean? Uh, but no, nah, we're not going to guess what your mom does every week because it's going to get to a point where you ain't going to give a shit. <laughs> so, I mean, we're at that point right now. No, nah, Alex, I'm kidding with you, man. You know, you know we are. You know, you, you know how we are. You know we joke. But uh, I, we have an email here from uh, Action Lover who says... Now, this is kind of a loaded question. We might not be able to answer all of these okay. because he asked about five questions in one email. He says, how did you guys meet? How is co-host so smart? Okay, I didn't read this what? whole thing. Okay, I, okay, I, didn't read the, I didn't go through this whole list. I just saw that first part and thought, like, oh, this would be cool. Okay, uh, okay. we're not going to answer all these. We know this already. So, Number three is, are you and Edie married, referring to me? Can you give me a phone call sometime? <laughs> I really didn't read all this. <laughs> And mention me in your next couple of cold ones. Okay, so we just did all that. Right, that's that's done. Yeah. And, all right. So I, I'll answer the two best things on here. Uh, how do we meet? We, well, as we said, we all live in Austin, yeah. and we all did a, a television access show. Right. Right before we started doing this. I mean, we all came from different backgrounds. We love movies. Uh, Cyrus was working at a bar. Uh, you and I were only the two black people in town at the time, as some people assume. <laughs> That's, we, that is not true. But. No, 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 no. We were both uh, cartoonists and artists and hung out with a lot of different people. Uh, you know, you were doing your cartoons right next to Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, Robert Rodriguez. Oh, a lot of people. So I don't even drop names. A lot of people don't know that. that We actually uh, hung out with Robert Rodriguez for a short period of time. And that's another one, man, that I would see at South by Southwest sometime. <laughs> I ain't going to tell that story again, but that dude brushed me off, man. <laughs> I ain't going to tell the story. But I, mean, but I, I, mean, I mean, I would go visit you, and you, you, know, you and him would be like right next to each other working on stuff. Yeah, no, it, it was a very short period. We used to work in the same room down at the college, and yeah. uh, we used to, and whenever they had those comic functions at yeah. the comic book store, we'd be out there drawing. He he would come by, and he, we sat down and we talked for a long time. Yeah, I then, remember that. And then uh, uh, Spy Kids really blew up, and I did an interview with him, and he's like, "Yeah, and you are, oh. motherfucker, you oh. who I no." Actually, last time he saw me, he did speak, but I mean, look, I don't, you know me, I don't hang around, I, I don't. I don't want to hang around people who are famous just because we want to hang around them sure. because they're famous. I mean, I don't. I, I could give a shit, but don't don't brush me off like, oh, you, I'm gonna get you away from me because I know you're gonna ask me for something. I ain't gonna ask you for shit. 
this may be, let me hold five dollars and run, <laughs> run right across the street over here to McDonald's and get me a Big Mac real quick. <laughs> That's all I'll ask for. <clears throat> man, I might come back and ask for a dollar when I supersize. <laughs> hey, man, I still need a dollar ninety nine. Can you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's how we met. Yeah, we all used to hang around and yeah, and do all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then uh, uh, Carlisle just begged to be on the show, so we let him. <laughs> well, we we, we re recruited him from another popular movie website yeah actually he wasn't begging he did he did ask he was from another website and they were having some trouble and then he said i can, can i hang around with you guys and do it with you until all this stuff blows over and we're like yeah so he stayed around yeah so, at the time we said yeah we thought it sounded like a good idea <laughs> little yeah, did we know yeah. and a lot of people have been asking about the co-host and i'll just give you the co-host background when I was in school, I had an Asian friend who was about to go to MIT because he developed like this technology, this artificial intelligence. And he had this, the, he created the machine that could actually communicate with you and talk back. Yeah. Except the motherfucker had nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. Just, well, you know, we, we, we live so close to the border, he got the parts from Mexico. And <laughs> That's right. I don't <laughs> know what he had the best choice. Yeah, the thing wouldn't shut up. I mean, he before it got big, he just said, man, look, I'm moving on to big and better things when I go to MIT. Can you just take this shit off my hands? It's kind of like Anakin Skywalker building C-3PO. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. And then later going like, I don't remember this at all. <laughs> Except this one is a bastard. He's not a gay robot. He's just a little son of a bitch. That's all. So, so that's how we got a hold of the co-host in Edie. Uh, well, Edie wanted some of this good stuff right here. You know what I'm saying? From, no, Edie, Edie just uh, was a friend of ours and... She's a sweet girl, and she pretty much bugged the hell out of me to come on here and do some stuff. So I said, "All right." And no, Edie and I aren't married, but you know, I, she'll come around. Yeah, who who knows what the future holds? Edie and I aren't married. I don't I don't want to get married to Edie. I just want to you know have it for a night or two. That's all. <laughs> so did, did you get that chloroform in the mail you you, you ordered? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> or, or the roofies? The roofies. Be yeah, <laughs> give about ten of them. Take advantage of it for about a week. Put a, put a, <laughs> Put a feeding tube on her. <laughs> <laughs> then, then bury in a shallow grave in Mexico somewhere. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the. And no, I, I will not call you. Actually, if you can, you know what, uh, action lover, if you can, I will. I've been calling people when I need some advice on something. If you can give me some good advice on how to do what I'd asked for a while back, that whole thing of um, what's that? Doing the uh, what you call it. Um, well, the, action the, lover, it's up to you to figure out not yes, only action lover, how to do it, but what it is. <laughs> that's your job. If you could just guess what I'm thinking, if you could read my mind, then I will call you. Because <laughs> that'll be some incredible shit. <laughs> no, uh, it, the the whole thing I asked about by doing the the uh, the, the, the call ins, how to how to take calls while recording. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you can give me some good advice on that, action lover, yeah, I will call you. Call you. That's that's. That's kind of gay, man. Will you call me? <laughs> One dude on here would ask me some advice. He's like, Corey, I broke up with my girlfriend. And I don't know what's going on. I feel so bad. And she said she left me because I had no, no, I had no, no drive, no inspiration. I was like, well, yeah, that's why she left you. Because <laughs> surprised enough, they're sitting on your ass, <laughs> broke as shit. <laughs> no, it was a dude. I told him now, he was a nice guy. I ain't gonna say his name because I don't know if he wants me to. But he emailed Cyrus. me back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm his sponsor. <laughs> I'm his big brother. No, this guy told me that he's like about eighteen, nineteen. He's like, man, that was good. That was really good advice you gave me because I, I pretty much just said, fuck that bitch. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, not in, in those words, but I would have gave him the same sentiment. I just told him, I said, man, no, I, like, I'm being like, rude. look, you're eighteen. You're gonna meet a lot of girls between now and then. Yeah. Why, why would you want to get nailed down with this one? Exactly, eighteen. I was like, what are you? You crying about that? Yeah. You know how many guys are trying to shake off girls that are, exactly. that, are, that are on their ass when they're eighteen? I mean, you, you got, you got lucky. <laughs> Yeah, and you got some on your resume to take to your next job. If yeah, you I like get what it. I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. I said, man, go out tonight with your friends. Get this off your mind. You know, go to Chuck E. Cheese and play some games. Because <laughs> you can't go to a bar yet. Uh, That's you, true. <laughs> you got a fake ID. Put it to full effect tonight. And go out and, and meet some chicks. You know, then flirt, flirt around a little bit. Play that whole angle of you just got broke up with somebody. Make yourself sympathetic. Oh, hell, you know, get a job as a bag boy in a grocery store and just hit on all the soccer moms. You know, one Ooh. of them going to turn over for you. Oh, boy. Hey, listen to listen to the man right here. You, listen, you, you catch listen. some woman who's like in her mid-40s, not feeling attractive, and then here's this young kid smiling at her. She'll go for it. You you damn right, Leon. Listen to your Uncle Leon, my man. Yeah, go Better yet, go, get your, go to a rich neighborhood. Because the thing to do is black. Uh -huh. Go to your, go to a rich neighborhood and summer's coming. Make yourself a black pool boy. Because, 
You're going to find yourself some, some rich white woman who's going to have some fantasies. <laughs> now, hopefully you're not one of the, the black people out there who are, are afraid to swim. <laughs> yeah, you, that, that might you, not yeah. work out so good. Yeah, you just got your hair done. <laughs> you know, you got your braids done and you don't want to get all that shit wet. Yeah, are you just scared of water? <laughs> and uh, you're scared of the dog they got? <laughs> water and dogs. Boy, black people don't like that. <laughs> I, I, was no, like, I, I hate that. I, I, I hate that whole idea <laughs> that black people are scared to swim. I love to swim. No, it's bullshit. Too. No, I do. I love to swim also. After I got pushed I, in there, you know, I, I, I swim while I'm eating watermelon and fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep it above water, <laughs> playing basketball, trying to keep tap his, dancing. Exactly, trying to keep his fro fresh, <laughs> to keep from getting all wet. <laughs> Picking his teeth, yeah. Now go get man. Go to go to a nice uh, upper middle class neighborhood and apply for the pool boy job, and you know wait for a husband to go away during the day. Okay, I'm just kidding, man. I don't do all that. No, really, you're 18. You don't need don't need that kind of pressure on you right now. No, no, wait. Okay, he's black. He don't even have to go to, to the 40 set. All he needs to do is find a good. He can find a good teenage girl who's got who hates her dad. Because you you know oh man you you know how well that works for us I mean I you know I, I'm embarrassed to say that like when that opportunity has arisen we're like you only whip me just to make your parents angry I'm like well cool I'll work with what I got yep <laughs> yeah yeah introduce me to your dad <laughs> <laughs> hey pops <laughs> what's up man <laughs> this your ride right here on the black hand side. <laughs> So I was fucking your daughter last night, and she told me about you. Now you know. I mean, it's like you if you if you do that, man. Don't don't turn down nothing. Like I I remember one girl. And I ain't lying. You and you saw it that night when it happened. I probably shouldn't say this over, over I, the. I, I've seen it a lot, but which which time are you talking about? Uh, well, you weren't there. You remember that night that uh, I got pulled over by the police and not for being black. And oh, that, that night, yeah. Damn, we got to do this review later, man. I'm gonna tell this story. <laughs> we'll do this review review tomorrow or something. But uh, man, I was uh. And this is this is not a bragging thing. It's it's just something that happened. And see, and I'm telling you this, uh, my little 18 year old friend, because if you get locked down by a girl too early, this is what you're gonna miss out on. Uh, we, I was uh, we were at a bar, and it was closing time. And this girl and her friend, they recognized me from somewhere. I don't know how, but they were a little wasted. So they're like, "Where's the party, Corey? Where's the party at?" And Hey, I said, <laughs> right here in my party, pants. party at my place. <laughs> and at the time, there were a few people coming over. And so these two girls got in the car and we were driving and the cops pulled me over. And because, you know, I had the lights at first. And when you, when you don't stop soon enough, they do that. Woo! Yeah. So I pulled over in a, in a IHOP parking lot and they pulled that light on my ass and saw those two girls sitting in the front seat because I had a lot of shit in the back. And they're like two white girls, right? No, one was one was mixed and one was white. Okay. And they and so they they say yeah so where are you guys coming from and they we're coming from a bar they can see that the girls are messed up and so we ain't, ain't no use in line so they had a little bit to drink tonight and I'm like yeah but not me that's why I'm taking them home sir because they're a little wasted and it's like, uh huh step out the car <laughs> and I was like shit <laughs> and so it was two cops. And, and and race probably doesn't have anything to do with this. I'm no, not. Oh, of course but not. No, no, I'm not. Comes to cops. I'm not saying with the cops, but the the white cop took me aside while the black cop was over at the car, yeah. and so he's like, "Oh yeah, so uh, look at your license here, uh, Mr. Coleman. What do you do?" And so I'm looking at him, and then I'm looking over at the car because the other cop is still over there chatting up the girls. And he's like, "Oh, he's not going to take him from me. Let, you know, you don't need to look over there. Don't, you know, I'm talking oh. to you. Talk to me." And I was like, "Shh." He said, well, "So what do you do?" I was like, uh, "So I didn't." Graphic art, sir. Like, oh, yeah, really? Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I don't know, a few years. You like it? I'm like, oh, shit, he's about to take my arm. He's going to ask me next, <laughs> what what arm do you draw with? Okay, give it to me. <laughs> I'm right. like, break my wrist. Don't, don't look at the girls. Look look, look at here at me. Look at me. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I thought you going to like say, yeah, you like doing that? Yeah, which hand you draw with? Yeah, give it to me. You know, wrap my knuckles with the bar. You know, <laughs> right, like, ah! right. But, and I said, yeah, I, I, I do. I do like it. He's like, yeah. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Pretty inter in interesting thing you do. I'm like, yes, it is. Yeah. I said, did, did I do anything wrong? I'm like, no, Mr. Coleman, no. This is a, uh, we just want to know, we're doing recruiting for the state troopers. <laughs> and uh, we just like to know if you'd like to uh, probably consider being a state trooper. And I was like, I'm driving home with two drunk girls <laughs> and a fucking Chevy Lumina <laughs> with a backseat full of shit. And I do graphic art. And you asking me if I want to be a state trooper. What kind of recruiting campaign is this shit? 
Anyway, after that, right. after yeah, sure. When you like to get paid to cock block everybody who drives <laughs> on the road, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I, I, what am I going to say at the time? I was like, wow, that sounds like a great opportunity. Just let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so I get in a man. I get back in the car and we get to the house and uh, there's a, there is a little party going on and the girl who's white is sitting next to me and she's telling me the whole time. She's like, I am sorry for what my people have done to you. Yeah. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. And I'm thinking, there's no problem here. But I'm thinking, ah, 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 ah. hey, wait. Well, wait. it has been hard, but how sorry are you? <laughs> well, it's, she was. It, Talk is much, cheap. Exactly. It pretty much didn't have to like say <laughs> but, anything. But she what was, are you willing to do in as much as restitution? Now, there are kids uh, who are listening to this. So I'm just going to say we, we all had a good time having a slumber party and playing Monopoly the rest of the night. So. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how, and she, she was so sorry for it that she, she let me win. <laughs> and, uh, you know, is, is with all the things we've said tonight and everything with this story that you're going to get the most email about using the, the term mixed. Well, she was, what am I going to say? She, the, one of the girls, the, it was the white girl that was saying that the, actually the mixed girl fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> the mixed girl. I'm saying that she's going to want to be the biracial, biracial girl. Yeah. I'm sorry. Should I, uh, so I guess I shouldn't say mulatto then. <laughs> You know, I thought mulatto was fine, but I, but apparently it's not anymore. No, apparently that's like un, that's very not PC. So I, I don't get that. Um, but because it, it's one of these things where, like, like with, like when you say Asian, it's like, hey, people from India from Asia too. That's that's really not fair. But uh, you know, you saying biracial for all you knew, she was m mixed with three races, even four. I don't know. She fell asleep on the couch. I didn't care. <laughs> 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 You know, so I uh, she wasn't mixed up with me, so <laughs> gives a damn. So anyway, the, the, oh, one more common question that people ask is, okay, what what do you think would make a good spill movie? Okay. Nothing. What? Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> spill movie. I don't know. What, 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 what are we gonna do? We sit up there in a theater, review a movie, and talk about it for an hour and a half. <laughs> spill the motion picture. <laughs> this movie, Meet the Spartans. <laughs> So I, I don't know. Plus, it ended up sucking. We have to give our own movie uh, some old bullshit. That's, you know. That's the thing about it, man. We, I don't ever want to do any kind of movie based on us because <laughs> it probably would suck. And then we'd have to come back and pretty because, you know, if we didn't review the movie, people be like, man, y'all are chicken shit. <laughs> right. I mean, we can't win because, you know, we're going to come back and make fun of our own movie. Yes. And then from that point on, whenever we call some old bullshit on something, we would get that like, well, who, who are you? After that uh, movie you made. You you got no right. Why would I, why should I care what you think? You exactly right, man. We will never ever make a movie. We'll leave, we'll let somebody make a fan film about us. <laughs> oh, I love the art that you guys are doing out there, and we're gonna try to make a fan art section like really very soon. Who is that? Is it Razmir? What was, was one of these guys? Somebody did a kick ass, a really cool picture. Did you see the one where we're all fighting co host? No, man. It was a badass picture. We gotta try to find that. Uh, Carlisle showed the winners of it, and that guy turned it in too late. Uh huh. And, and Carl, and, and it was the best one out of all of them. It's, and there's some good, there's some good work. Spicy donuts, the the mad sociopathologist, the the paleontologist, or whatever pa paleontologist, so, paleontologist, the so sociopathic person or whatever. He's he's done some good stuff. And I, I mean, if I don't mention your name, it's just I can't remember right now. Man, but I missed all these. A lot of people did some great artwork. Cool. And. And so this, but this guy did the best one, and he didn't get a prize. I wrote him back and said, "Hey, if you want something, I'll give it to you." But uh, Aaron Kent, Silver Surfer, all you guys, and a bunch of other you uh, of you other guys who are doing posts out there and blogging all the time, and doing good ones. Silver Surfer is active. And he, he Silver Surfer is very active, and DJ Kent and Aaron, all those guys are constantly putting up stuff. Yeah. And don't think that we don't think about that because we have talked about doing something for you guys giving out some kind of prize or something. And we want to do that to people who are truly active throughout the site for, on a regular basis. So, and so if you want to make some fan art, if you want to make a fan movie about us, we'll take it, but we ain't going to make one because <laughs> that'll be the end of our career. That's true. So Let's anyway, pack it up. Yeah. So anyway, that has been our cold ones tonight. Uh, I hope I haven't been too boring to y'all. I mean, what'd you think about this, man? Cause we went off in all kinds of directions. We did. Well, we had all the, the computer problems too. Yeah, but we covered that up pretty well. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Until we go back and hear it, yeah, Leon. I, I, I know what I. It, <laughs> so no, it was. Uh, I mean, I just, I just had fun shooting this shit with you. That's, no, me uh, too. 
So we'll we were gonna do a review for Horton Hears a Who, but we'll we'll do that later. It's so late right now. So thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to give it to us, get, give them to us because you can see we're reading them now. And I'm still looking for somebody to help me out with our technical problems as uh, as as uh, how to take calls on uh, during a recording. So anyway, that's it. Good night, y'all. Good night, everybody. Leon's tired. I'm telling you, he's just waiting for me to stop talking. He's like, <laughs> fuck, man, shut the fuck up. I want to go. All right, I'm done. Kind of. There it is. All right, done.